Welcome aboard for another video. Thanks, Conductor Keith. All right, so the tracking said it was going to arrive on Thursday. This is Monday. What's that, eh? Do you smell Craig's dog? Oh, yes. Saddle was just sniffing the box. I imagine she smells Craig's dog. Well, now is this exciting or what? Oh, boy. Oh, my goodness. So we have the Mutt Jeep. And we have a Soviet gun. These are going to go on my model railroad. Oh, look, a 1 to 48. 1 to 48 Avenger. Look at that. That's beautiful. 1 to 32 Junkers Stuka. Um, and, oh, because I'm such a huge fan of World War One, I, I had to have this. Yes, sir, Bob. This will be the third World War I British tank that I have in my collection. Now, just to compare planes in 1 to 48 scale, the 1 to 48 Kobe, I've got the Skytrain here. 1 to 48 Mustang. I already have a Mustang, but it's the Maverick one. 1 to 48 Typhoon. 1 to 48 Zero. 1 to 48 Measuresmith ME262. Now, here's the thing. I have quite a few of these airplanes, World War I and World War II, in 1 to 32-ish scale. I had my first 1 to 48 scale Mustang. There's a video earlier on my channel about that one. And I really liked it, primarily because I'm running out of space. I have large-scale trains. There's only so much space to hang planes above there. Uh, I do hang them up to be part of the railway, just to, you know, to, to give more feel to the room. I have to switch them out now and then because there's only so much space I have. So as you can see here in my layout room, I've got aircraft hanging up. I was so in love with the 1 to 48 Mustang that I thought, oh my goodness, I just have to try more of them. And in the bottom of the box is the obligatory catalog. Thanks, Terry. Have fun building, Craig. Craig's an awesome fellow and a good friend. Hopefully you find the video series I will do on these Kobe models useful. Oh my goodness, what to build first. Ha, ha, my World War I interest. A wonderful new airplane to hang above my railway. The Skytrain. Oh, oh, this Avenger. Look how beautiful that is. 1 to 48, but look how beautiful it is, the colors. This one is meant to go on my railway. As you can see, it comes with some extra... You know, sandbags and whatnot that I'll also use on the railway. First combat operational jet fighter. Oh, I don't know. A Jeep for the railway. <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to do first. It's exactly one week later and look at that haul. That's a goodly pile of boxes and manuals. The ones I built represent 2,214 pieces. My fingers on both hands feel kind of like you're just learning the guitar, but on both hands. It's weird. And the Mustang my son built represents 152 pieces. My main historical interest, despite these all being World War II and that being Vietnam War era, is the Great War. So I was utterly delighted to get this Mark I mail tank. This one is in 1 to 35. I wish it was larger for reasons I will explain when I do a video just about this. I got this World War II Soviet gun to use on a model railroad. Now, it came with extra sandbags and a few other things, and of course this barbed wire, but here they are, the four sets of two, as part of a scenic effect on my large-scale model railroad. And yes, the power is in these overhead wires. The other pieces of barbed wire I have is literally blended in with that scenery. It's, it's glued right in and blended in with that scenery right there. I got the Jeep Mutt simply because I loved the World War II Jeeps. It's later than the era I normally model, being as this Jeep came out in 1964. It doesn't say on the box or anywhere what scale this Jeep is, but I have a whole pile of scale rulers, and I can tell you that within a few scale inches, they're that close, this is 1 to 24 scale. I just had to have this Stuka. I mean, just look at it. Beautiful. With the gull wings. Lots of details with bombs underneath. Just absolutely love this model. The Stuka is 1 to 32 scale. I also have a whole pile of classic old toy trains that are nominally 1 to 48 scale. They're not fine scale, they're toy trains like Lionel. 
And so a while back, I got some 1 to 48 scale tanks to see if, you know, if I'd like them. And on my channel, and you'll see some videos of me mounting those tanks on flat cars and running them on O-gauge trains. Well, then I decided, would I like airplanes? Hmm, well, yes, I liked it. I liked it a lot. So I might be building a future O-gauge layout somewhere with trains, a little air strip, and have the tanks and whatnot. I like this so much, I decided, well, I'm going to have a go at 1 to 48 airplanes. Of course, they're smaller, they're easier to store than the 1 to 32 ones. Would I like them? Oh my gosh. They're surprises, some really cool surprises. A couple of things I didn't like, but as you'll see, because I'm going to do a video of each of these, uh, you know, I'll go into more detail on what worked, what didn't. Most of all, it worked. Amazing, some real gems. This airplane is an utter gem. Like this naval torpedo bomber. Oh, it's such a gem. I mean, look at it, look at it. Such a gem. This one, I thought, boring transport, but I like airplanes. And this is based on the DC-3, uh, you know, what used to be called the Goonie Bird. And I thought, oh, you know, it's the Skytrain. It's the military version. I like the DC-3 in history. So why don't I get it? I thought it would be kind of ho-hum because it's, you know, just a transport plane. It's not a bomber, etc. I was so pleasantly surprised and I had a big smile on my face the entire time I built this thing. It is amazing. Logistics was important in war and this is a very cool model. And to round it out, I got something Japanese, something British, the first jet plane to see aerial combat. I have mixed feelings about that one, which you'll see in the video. So if you like Kobe, if you like putting some of this stuff into you know model settings. If you're interested and you don't have some of these, if you're wondering if the one to 48 scale is okay, follow along. So there you have it, a most amazing Kobe haul. I wanna thank Craig at Brick Army Canada. Craig has become a really good friend. We share an interest in model trains and uh, other things. To be completely clear and for full disclosure, Craig gives me the family rate on my purchases. But the trade-off is he will use my videos on his website, and that's fine. Uh, that you know, We support each other. We all support each other's hobbies, and that's the name of the game. Keep the hobby going, spread the word, enjoy ourselves, meet like minds, etc. So over the next week, I'm going to be making more videos about these uh, in greater detail, and some of it's going to include some fun, and I hope to see you there.